Mr. Minnick with the coolest game project button demo ever. <laughs> Let's start our walkthrough of this demo program that will be helpful to students around the globe. When they click run on this program and they click their mouse anywhere within this square area, there's proof that the button works because it turns green. If they run this project and they don't click in the button area, it does not turn the screen green. So this simple cause and effect action is something that you too can code at home using free turtle graphics at the website Replit or other websites actually. Now let's upgrade this and possibly turn it into a teacher for a game project. Let's upgrade this as we explore why it works the way it does. In this program, you must import Turtle, otherwise nothing works at all. It's always good to have an area of a program designated as the drawing the graphics area. I call it setting up the screen. It's always good to use functions, which you can fold the code in a function, DEF. And it's always necessary to have a main program area. So when this program first executes, somebody with the initials JA would know that the, that the setting up the screen area executes. Well, I have this button one turtle that goes really fast because the speed is zero and I hide the, the graphic. The, see, if you don't have that code there for hide turtle, when you run the program, you see this annoying triangle. That's kind of annoying. Nobody likes to see that triangle or worse, the picture of a turtle. That makes it look like elementary school. So I use the hide turtle command. Nobody likes a slow program. So if I didn't have speed zero there, when I'd run the program, we'd have to wait forever for the button to be drawn on the screen. Nobody has time for that. So we often do speed zero in easy turtle graphics programs. Uh, the name for a button turtle. Yeah, why not name it button one? Now you could name it like button one pen or something like that, but button one's a perfectly good name. And by the way, if you don't have a screen, then you can't put the button on the screen. So we need the screen. And I like a blank line there because, well, it's good style. It just makes sense to separate the screen stuff from the button stuff. And this right here, this is called a loop. The loop executes four times. Well, if you were a soldier and you marched forward 100 pixels, then you made a left 90 degree turn and the sergeant said, do that four times. Guess what? In the world of geometry, you would have forward 100, turn left, forward 100, turn left, forward huh, 100, turn left, forward, and you would be back to where you started again, just saying. So if you wanted a Pentagon button, this is what you do, five, uh, what's 360 divided by five? I think it's 75. If you ran this version of the program, you'd have a Pentagon button or close to it. If you wanted a hexagon, that's something with six sides, you'd put 60 in here on video, I'm on video right now, and you'd have a hexagon button. Just saying, this is a very flexible program, but I wanna keep it a normal square button. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm back to the original version that you all ran the code when you started it. Now let's identify why it clicks the way it does. Because just drawing a button doesn't make it clickable. Once upon a time, there was a button that said, click here for a million dollars, and I clicked, but I didn't get the million dollars. What's up with that? Well, because it wasn't in the code. It's like betting on the wrong horse in the Kentucky Derby, only to have it disqualified. Sometimes that happens. Uh, unfortunately for some people, but fortunately for others that betted on the right horse that won after the disqualification. Okay, so let's look at the real part of this program that makes it click. You can read this awesome documentation, hashtag comment, on your own time, but the way it works is there's a function called handle button clicks, and by putting the name of that function there, like go to bathroom. If there was a function in my classroom called go to bathroom, well then as long as you named it go to bathroom, it would execute. So the name of the function is not really a big deal. 
But a good name for this function in terms of computer science would be one called, if there's a question from perhaps Lewis, raise your hand and ask. Okay, back on the camera here. Because this program works with this command called on screen click and the listen command, these two lines of code just work the way they work. All the action is really in this function called handle button clicks. Let's study it closely. Oh, it uses an if statement. It says if you are at the GPS coordinate x greater than zero, at the same time that your GPS coordinate is less than or equal to 100, at the same time that your up and down Y click is greater than zero, at the same time and that your Y is less than 100. What a coincidence. Those are the coordinates of the button. Because the button was drawn at the coordinates 0, 0 here in the left corner, 100, 0 here, 100, 100 in the upper right corner, and 0, 100 here. Because I purposely drew a button that did match this GPS sort of coordinates in this if statement, the button does detect the click of the mouse within its rectangular area. If it works, it changes the screen's background color to green. But I already saw a student, an awesome athlete. I don't know if throwing a javelin is being an athlete or not. I mean, it's just one thing. But I call that an athlete. Chess players are athletes too. And so are shot putters and javelin throwers and discus throwers. I don't know about high jumpers, but definitely throwers are athletes. They have to eat right. They have to do yoga to mentally prepare their far throw. And at the moment of execution, it all has to execute like this program correctly. So if this works, when I click that button, an athlete who changes the word green to gold knows that now when I click this, it changes the gold. But a computer science athlete also knows that if you type in Lewis's favorite color, it automatically reaches into his brain and figures out what his favorite color is. And that background color will show up. Let's see. I'm going to run this. When I click this, it's Lewis's favorite color. According to artificial intelligence, wow, it read his mind. Oh, no, that's the default color that you get when it doesn't know the color that's typed in there. So only certain colors are known by Python. Look them up elsewhere on my website or in Google. But I think green is one of them, so it worked for green. But we also, uh, um, Julian, for diagnosis purposes, I also print over here in the console window proof that it worked. That's kind of like my behind the scenes area, proof that it worked. So let's see, here's a possible upgrade for Tommy if he wants to make a game for this. Else, print button was not clicked. So maybe we put a little diagnostic message that if the click didn't occur in this GPS location, 0, 0, 100, whatever, it says button was not clicked. Let me test the program with that else in there. I click here, and I do see evidence that it was not clicked. Watch. Click, 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 click. That was about seven clicks because I'm fast. Well, look. It's like I got a not clicked every time I clicked. Now, nobody can see that unless they go to the console window. That's no good. So let's say that we uh, screen.bg color. Uh, let's say red, because red kind of means you can't go. So now, when we click off of the button, it changes. Oh, I misspelled BG color. I forgot to see. Now when I run the program and click off of the button, it's proof that it, that it was not clicked. Hey, this could be a fun game where it's like it says click me, but it, you get reward if you don't click it. 
I don't know, that'd be the world's stupidest game ever. Just saying. If Tommy added else and did this, it could be like the world's like one of those idiot games where you like do the opposite and it works. So that else is just there to prove that you can figure out if hey, let's add a score. Let's add a variable that counts how many clicks. Yeah, good upgrade. Shh, let's focus. Where would you put a variable? Probably in the setting up the screen area. So let's add a whole new area called variables. And I'll call it global variables because I know what I'm doing as a teacher. And let's set the score to zero. So there's a variable that keeps track of the score. Because some students, like Maurice, knows that it's good to put comments, that's the player's score. So we explain it with a comment. But the score variable is zero, kind of like your age was zero when you were born. Score is zero at the beginning of this program. But now, every time we change the color to green, we add one with what's called the plus equals command, which we've already studied. And it only works if you type global score here. So unless you connect that variable score to this one by typing global score there inside the DF and getting your indentation lined up, now it will add one to the score each time. But I want proof that it's actually working, so I type print score to see if it was, and I'm gonna disable the green thing because that's kind of annoying. The second time you click it, it was already green. So that's kind of annoying right now for this testing. So right now I'm waiting for my period eight, nine class to type this in if they want to follow along. If not, I'll sell this demo to them tomorrow for the price of just asking nicely. Yeah, seriously, if they ask nicely, I'll make this a link on, the, on, our, on our website. Okay, I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna click, and it's not turning green, which is designed that way, but now, Look, I'm up to 15. Whoa, I'm going to keep going. Click, click. Oh, the, I'm up to 22. I heard that one time there was a student that got it to 600 within one class period. But that's boring if you have to look over here. That was just for testing purposes. So let's actually make the score show up on the screen where people can see it. Damn. Okay, we're back after a station break there. So let's finish this off by showing the output instead of in this black console window where it's for testing purposes for the coder. Let's have the score show up here to see how many times we clicked. Well, score, can we can do a dot right. We can show the score if we use button one uh, dot right str parentheses score. This should work but I think it's gonna write it at the spot where the button last was. See, button one is a, can use the right command. This is probably gonna be ugly, I did not test this, but let's see. When I run this, yup, it works. But it puts this last, the new score on top of the last score and it smudges it out. So each time we write the score, we should clear out the previous score I think there's this undo command that can undo the last thing that you did. Let me see if that works. No, that doesn't work in this version, so let me use the clear command because I know that works. Here it goes. I run the program. Oh, now it works, but it's, oh, cool. Click the imaginary spot to get a point. And that's kind of a stupid version of the game. So we do have to redraw the button so let's use a different graphic for the score, a different button pen. Let's not do it that way. So try to hang with me in this video. I'm going to copy and paste those three lines of code right there. And those three lines of code up in the setting up the screen area. I'm going to call this button one caption. So the button one caption, I'm going to hide the turtle and do speed zero for that as well. But button one caption is going to be the one that I use to write the score. I'll fix these hashtag comments later. 
when this video is ended. But now that I have this button called button one caption, I'm just going to do button one caption clear and button one caption right. And this is a kick butt program that could count as a gain to an otherwise bored student. Damn, I'm up to like 12 already. Click, click, click. Wow, I'm up to 20. But if you click off the button, you die. It's red. So if you click off, guess what? Button one caption goes to the word loser. Loser. So watch the last time before I go live with this. If you accidentally click off the button, watch what happens. Loser. It says loser there. Okay, so that is now ready for prime time. That demo, which was a period eight nine bonus special, the other my other classes are not going to get this version. So that link to that little video, the video that I just gave, that link is going to go on Mr. Minix Monday, May six calendar that the whole world is probably checking in on. At matches video, there it is. I will upload the video later, and uh, I'm about ready for my exit music. This video is already probably too long, and I'm back to my video. 16 minutes that was probably already too long, and I'm about ready to sign off. I'm just thinking of other things like one time the chicken crossed the road, and I asked why did the chicken cross the road. Well, it was to pick up the uh, javelin that somebody threw over 200 feet or yards or meters or something like 200 is a big number. Okay, signing off now. Yeah, right. <laughs>